Hello, everybody. A beautiful Saturday afternoon to you and hope you're well. Just going to wait for a couple more of you guys to jump on here. I have to test my mic every single time I come on. Mwawombeni wa sampachiende says. <laughs> well, bless you. Let me just test this real quick. Wa sampachiende says. <laughs> okay, got that. That's, that's the way to test it. Because sometimes you jump on and you think you're on, but you're not on. Hello, everybody. Just a few shout outs before I begin. Nawa Karen, hello, bless you. Peter Peary, bless you. Good afternoon. Nkandu. Kausensi. Is it Kausensi? That's a beautiful name. Nkandu Kausensi. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. You're audible. Joseph Wadia says, I'm audible. Thank you. Bless you. The volume is loud and clear. Obed Kaluba. Says it's loud and clear. Beautiful people. Thank you. Bless you. Precious people. Precious, precious people. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. John JB, watching you, Simon Moylane, from, from the Copper Belt, from Coppola. Well, thank you, John JB. Listen, I'm not going to be very long. There's something I need to share with you that I think it's, it's it's really important for us to know things that affect all of us and i think we owe it to uh, to each other there's certain things i think it, it's very important for us to to share certain information that way you have a better understanding and a better a clearer picture of of who you're dealing with okay so, so here it is. I, I, have, I have a story to share with you. And of course, I'm not going to jump on here and peddle lies and, and tell you a, a false story. What I'm going to tell you is a true story. And it happened. And if you were to call Wankanduluo right now and ask her, you call Wankanduluo and say to her, where was on Facebook? And, and he has a story to tell. Is this story factual or not? Does the story have merit or not? Does the story hold water or not? Is the story planted on firm ground and it is it sustainable? That's the question you must ask. And if you were to pick up the phone, and ask her. She will tell you that everything that I'm sharing with you now is truthful, is factual. It happened as sure as I am sitting here, it happened. Now, I, I must tell you on the outset that the only way that you're going to know about this story's authenticity is if you call her, and I guarantee you, she'll tell you it happened. Here it is. Many years ago, this was when Mr. Sata was the president of Zambia. He had just been elected president, and, and in, his, in his first year as president, lots of things were happening, things were changing, you know. And I had gone to see Van Kanduluo that year. And Van Kanduluo was serving as the minister of local government and housing at the time. And I'd gone to see her 
about a, an issue and and we were I was sitting in her office and while her and I were talking you know we were exchanging pleasantries just talking about stuff talking about life you know talking about politics talking about the dispensation of Zambian politics and then all of a sudden the phone rang her phone in her office in her ministerial office rang and it was her secretary and the secretary told her that you know someone was 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 on the other end of the line and desperately needed to talk to her and she starts to talk and i could hear her i was sitting directly in front of her and she was on the phone and Wang Kandulo kept on saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. We'll do that. And she hung up the phone. And naturally, my curiosity got the best of me. I said, Wang Kandu, who the heck was that? And she looked at me and she said, well, that's the vice president. And you all know who the vice president was, Mr. Guy Scott, whom I know, incidentally. Mr. Scott will verify the story. So I said to Wang Kandu, I said, what's the deal? She says, Mwewa, do you know the flyover bridge by Findico House? I said, yeah, I, I know where that is. She says, there are some guys that are building makeshift shelters, unplanned shelters, unauthorized shelters, right at the bottom of Findical House. Do you guys remember this? You know, when you go over the flyover bridge, you're coming from town, you're at the uh, Kafue roundabout, you're going over the Findical House flyover bridge, and you're headed to Kamwala. Is that Kamwala? You're headed out of town. That flyover bridge right down there on the ground in those days, there were, there were multiple, multiple makeshift, impromptu, unplanned structures that were coming up. And Wang Kandu was trying to get rid of those structures. They, they had already given the directive the communique had already been sent out. Her office as the Ministry of Local Government and Housing had made a statement about this. Her office was opposed to this haphazard style of doing things where Kadas just build whatever the heck they want and wh wherever the heck they are. Bang Kandu had issued a directive. Remove those makeshift, impromptu, unplanned structures. And right on the verge, right on the edge, right on the precipice of her directive being carried out, Wang Kanduluo got a phone call from Mr. Guy Scott who was the vice president of Zambia at the time. You know what Wankandu said to me? She said, Mwewa. She calls me Mwewa. Here it is. I'm trying to do my job. And then we get phone calls from high offices telling me I can't do my job. Well, she wasn't as dramatic as I'm being right now. She was very calm. I must be honest with you. I mean, I don't want you to think that I'm exaggerating. But she did say to me, she said, we, we are brought into these offices to do our jobs. But sometimes our job is difficult because here it is, we're on the verge of doing something for the benefit of the city. And then we start getting... Phone calls from, from high offices 
telling us that don't do that. Forget those plans. Yes, in Kandu, what you're trying to do is, is of great benefit to the city, but there's some key guys. There's some, some kadas that are more equal than others that have a vested interest in those structures that you're trying to remove in Kandu. Don't touch those structures. That's what the vice president told her. And guess what she did? She said, well, hey, I'm just here to do my job. I'm trying to do my job, but you're making it difficult for me to do my job. But I'll do it. And so she took a, a hands-off approach. Those structures continued, and that's my story. True story. It really happened. <laughs> Chilesha says, is this a paid advert, Mr. Moyo? <laughs> See there, here it is. Martin says, that's the, that is the only reason people hate her. She's tough and a no-nonsense woman. I can tell you that. She is very tough. She is. I mean, you know, I mean, she was, you know, she doesn't mess around, boy. <laughs> spin doctor. <laughs> Kandu Shiva says, spin doctor. Fiongo. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Well, hey, guys, that, that, that was my story. It really happened. And, and, and I remember her feeling frustrated. She was frustrated. She really wanted to get this job done. She knew that she was doing the right thing. Those, those structures were unplanned, illegal, and, and her office did the right thing by making sure that they tackled it and, and, and they tried to contain it. But she gets an, a call from the vice president and the vice president says to Ankanduluo, Nkandu, look the other way. Leave those boys. Can you, can, can, can you believe that? Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. That's my story. <laughs> 